Hello everyone, this is Rachel, or Cladio Tan, and welcome to another project video. In this video, we're going to be making a crocheted hood for a doll. This is a completed hood, so you guys can get a glimpse of what we're aiming for here. This one I made with like the little thread that you use for making doilies, but I was thinking because this doll is significantly smaller that for this doll we're going to be using yarn. So the first step is doing three granny squares. And what you want to do is this is a great opportunity to use up tiny balls of yarn that you don't have another use for because you can use those tiny balls of yarn for this step and this step. So on this one, I'm going to be using this one for the middle and this for the second color. And then this is gonna be the color tying it all together. Of course, I'm not using small balls of yarn because I wanted it to stay within this color scheme and this is what I've got. So. Unfortunately, if you don't already know how to crochet, this tutorial isn't going to be super helpful, but if you do already know, you're going to be designing a granny square. You want the color that everything's going to pull together with to be the outer row or two, and you want it to be roughly the size of the side of the doll's head. So I'll be trying to make a granny square about this big. And pay attention to what you're doing because you're going to have to recreate that granny square two more times. So here we have our completed square. I'm really happy with this design. I think it looks striking. You can, in your square, shape this up however you want, as long as when you're done with your granny square, it is square shaped. And as you can see, it covers the side of her head. So now I'm going to go off camera to crochet the matching two squares for this, and then I'll be coming back to stitch them together and show you guys what we're going to do next. Connect them here and here to make a strip. You can sew them if you prefer. I personally would rather crochet them together, so that's how I'm going to be doing it. You'll have an easier time if you sew these sides together rather than one of the sides that has the little tails on them. Don't worry, the tails will be safely covered later. Right now we're just turning this into a strip so we can keep it going on the hood. Now that we have our strip here, this is going to be the hood part, the part that goes over the doll's head. And we're going to be adding to both sides of it. 
As you can see, we have plenty of room here, so I don't think we'll be having any issues. So it's now time to do the front, what's going to be the front of the cape, the side that's going to show around the doll's face. Because it's easier to do that before the back of the hood is sewn up or crocheted up. So we're going to be doing that. I'm going to do one row of stitches across here. And you can do these as short or as tall as you like. This is just to make the edge look more finished. So if you want to make significantly more room in the hood, you can do taller stitches. If you feel like the hood's already plenty big enough, you can do shorter stitches. And then we're going to be doing a row on top of that. Every other set of loops here, we're going to be doing a tall stitch and then a chain skipping one of these loops and then doing another one. I feel like I'm doing a bad job of explaining it, but if you guys are already familiar with crocheting, when you see me doing it in the time lapse, it should make sense. That's where the drawstring is going to be going through, so the hood can be fitted and posed how you want it to be. And then on top of that, we're going to be doing some edging stitches, just whatever kind of edging stitches you want. I plan to do scallops like this. So I'm gonna do all of those steps on time lapse, and then after that, I'm going to show you how we're going to um, finish up the back of the hood. The front of the cape is done. Next, we're going to finish up the back of the hood. So we're just going to do one row of stitches across here. I plan on doing the same kind of stitch I did up here just for some cohesiveness. And then we're going to fold the hood like this and crochet the whole thing shut. One thing I really like about doing the hood this way is you get a really cute little pointy top to your hood. You can see how it turned out on this one. I think it just gives it a really nice shaping. So I'm going to do all of that in time lapse and then I'm going to show you guys how we're going to do the little part that goes over the shoulders. Here we have the hood finished and it's time to start on the little cape part. Now because of her horn when she's the one wearing the cape, I will probably not pull the drawstring tight, but in a doll that doesn't have a horn, as you can see here, you can kind of fit the cape around the face. The first step down here is just going to be a little row of finishing stitches just like what we did up here and then we're going to be doing a row just like this one for the drawstring for around the neck and fitting the cape there and then after that it's just going to be rows of stitches until there's enough to cover her shoulders 
at the beginning and end of each row, here and here, you're going to want to do two stitches where you would normally have done one. So in this hole here, you're going to do two and then one all the way across and then two at the end. If you want it to flare out more, you could do the first two loops, have two stitches in each, but I think the gradual expansion worked out really well on this one. So I think I'm going to do this one here the same way. And then once there's enough rows to cover her shoulders, we're going to be doing a scalloped edge just like around the top. Um, now, if you don't want to have to cut the yarn and do a separate row one after the other, you can absolutely do that if you want. I personally have found that with doll things, it tends to unravel if there's too many ends. So what I would like to do is do a taller row facing up that's going to be the right side of the cape, and then the part where you're going to be seeing the back side of the row when you flip it. I'm going to be doing shorter stitches. Hopefully it makes more sense when you see it, so it'll add a little bit of a pattern. I did it with this one. You can see this is the tall row, this is the short row. So we're going to be doing it like that, and then I'll show you guys what it looks like at the end and inserting the drawstrings. Here we have our little cape. It is completely done except for the drawstrings. We're going to be threading one through here and one through here, and then we'll be able to fit it onto the doll. One of the things I really like about this design is that you can make an approximate size, and as long as you make it a little big, it should be able to fit a range of your dolls rather than just a couple. Also, if you were needing to do ones with elf ears. You could always make the center of the side squares fairly big so that the ears can even stick out of the hood or you could just make it extra big if it was smaller elf ears. So anyway, I'm going to do this last step of threading the drawstring through and then you're going to see what it looks like completed on the doll. Here at last we have the finished little hood. It's pretty roomy and if you were doing a photo shoot with like snow or something and you wanted her to look even warmer you could pull the drawstrings much tighter. I'm really happy with how this came out. The green is partially made of wool so it helps add that really warm vibe. If you wanted it to feel lighter you could crochet in an airier way with more space or with a thinner yarn. I hope this was fun to watch, and I hope it inspires some of you to make your own little hoods. If you're not already familiar with my content, I make videos about ball jointed dolls, miniatures, and artist dolls. And occasionally, I make videos about fashion or vintage dolls. So if that sounds cool to you, be sure to check out my other videos and subscribe. If you already are familiar with my videos, don't forget that I have a Facebook group. Anyone 13 years of age or older is welcome to join there and I just post there whenever I put a video up on YouTube so that you guys never miss an upload if that's important to you. It also enables you guys to give me feedback 
on videos that I have to mark for legal reasons as made for kids. I also have a Patreon where you guys can support me for as little as $2 a month in exchange for getting to see all my videos one to two weeks early and as soon as I reach my first support goal, I'll begin giving away one doll every single month to a patron and only patrons will have access to that giveaway. So be sure to check that out, see if that's something you might want to be a part of. Those who support me on the Fairy Godparent tier, in addition to what I just mentioned, also get a sticker of one of my dolls sent to them every single month and a shout out in every YouTube video I make. So shout out to Road to Eret Fan and my anonymous fairy godparents. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.